Hi everyone, welcome back to another video from eLearning Portal. In this video I will show you how to gamify your Moodle quizzes. Now why is it important to include gamification in your Moodle quizzes? We all know that playing games is second nature to most students. If they had to choose between learning and games, they would definitely prefer the latter. So why not combine the two? With gamification you can combine what they like, and that is games, with what they don't like, and that is learning. So in this video I will show you three Moodle plugins that you can use to gamify your Moodle quizzes. So let me show you how this is done. Our first plugin that we'll look at is Quiz Venture. So let's head on to our Moodle plugins directory. So it's moodle.org. Scroll down to the bottom and click on plugins. In your search bar, type in Quiz Venture. And I'll add the link, the direct link uh, in the description. Click on search and there's our plugin that we're going to install. So we click on the plugin. Make sure that you have the correct version of the plugin. So I'm on Moodle 3.11, so I'll download this version. It will download to your downloads folder on your computer. Go back to your Moodle site. Then under Site Administration, click on it. Then click on Plugins. And then click on Install Plugins. Now drag the downloaded plugin to the Upload window. And then click on Install Plugin from the zip file. Okay, so it will go through various steps in order to install the plugin correctly. When you hit this window, scroll down, make sure that everything is okay and click on continue. Then click on upgrade Moodle database. It will install this plugin Quiz Venture. It's stating now that uh, the mod quiz game is successfully installed and click on continue. And here, when you land on this screen, you'll know that your plugin was uh, successfully installed. From here, let's go to our course. And I'll click on Computing Course Development. So within this course, I want to add the gamification to my quiz. Okay, so let's create a quiz. By clicking on, making sure that Turn Editing is on. So clicking on turn editing on and now we can add an activity or a resource. Now I'll scroll down to where I want to add the activity and I want to add it under background reading. So let's click on add an activity or resource and find our quiz venture module that we've just installed. I'll click on it. Now for this quiz venture you need multiple choice questions and matching questions to actually um, allow this plugin to work. Okay, so make sure that you have multiple choice questions as well as matching questions in your question bank. So let's give it a name and I'll call this testing game. I'll scroll down. It says it asks me a question category and I'll have to choose a question category from my question bank. Okay, so I'll choose a question category. So let's use the basic computer system module. And you have to make sure that it is actually multiple choice or matching questions. And how do I do that? If I go back to my course and I click on the gear icon and I click on more, scroll down and go to question bank. You can actually see the categories. There's my categories within my question bank within that particular course. Okay. And I want to use this basic computer systems model. And I'll see here that these are all multiple choice questions and these are matching questions. Okay. And there's uh, short answer questions as well. It's better to use either multiple choice questions or matching questions or a combination of the two. Okay, so make sure that your quiz 
um, consists of those uh, question types. So here I have uh, considerations when creating computer systems. I have matching question as well as my multiple choice question. So I'll use this category. Okay. So I'll go back to my course. I'll add my activity or resource by clicking on add an activity or resource, clicking on course venture, giving it a name, testing game. Okay. I'll scroll down and I'll choose my considerations when creating computer systems. Under common module settings, I'll leave it on its default. I don't want to restrict access and so my activity completion should be marked as show activity as complete when conditions are met. Uh, and I don't want a, a required score there. Okay. So I'll leave everything on its default for tags and competencies and I'll click on save and return to course. And once it's done, so there's my game. I click on it. And now you'll see it will open up and you can start by hitting the space bar. So once you hit the space bar, you'll see that it asks the questions. And now the learners have to shoot and move with the, uh, with the up and down and right and left buttons on their keyboard and shoot with spacebar. So once they hit the correct answer, it will actually provide them with marks and you'll see my score is zero and my lives, I still have three lives left. So I can shoot by going right, left, up and down and it will provide me with a high score. And uh, incorrect answers actually shoots back okay. and this is really fun for the learners so now they can actually play their arcade game and learn simultaneously okay so and it's really motivating while uh, because they can compare their highest scores with uh, the learners in their class and this is how easy it is to set up a quiz venture. Now make sure that you have multiple choice questions as well as matching questions. You can also turn on the sound and it will, you will, you will hear the particular sound of the game. And, uh, you'll have, a, uh, the learners will have a live experience of the game. Okay. And this is really fun. It will keep them busy for quite a, quite some time. Um, okay, so this is the quiz venture plugin that we can use in Moodle, either for multiple choice questions or for matching questions. The second plugin we are going to use is the games plugin in Moodle. So let's go to Moodle.org again. Scroll down right at the bottom, we'll click on plugins. And then in our search box, type in games and click on search. The second one here says games, and this is an activity that we can use and install in Moodle. Uh, and it, it's a combination of Hangman, Crossword, Cryptex, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Sudoku, uh, Snakes and Ladders, Hidden Pictures, and Book with Questions. Okay, so these are all the games that's included within uh, the game activity. Okay, so I'll click on versions and then download the correct version. Once it's downloaded, I'll go to my Moodle site, click on Site Administration, and then click on Plugins. Click on Install Plugins, and then drag the downloaded plugin to my Upload box. Once it's ready for upload, I click on Install Plugin from the zip file. I go through the installation screens. Once I see your server environment meets all the minimum requirements, I click on continue. And then you'll see there's my mod module that I want to install. I click on upgrade Moodle database now. And there you'll see it's successfully installed my plugin. I click on continue. I can configure it either here or I can go into the settings of the game plugin. 
Okay, so I'll click on save. I'll leave everything on its default. So then when you see this screen, it will be successfully installed. Okay, so let's uh, look at how we can use that plugin. So let's go to my course on computing. Okay, so within the course, make sure that you have a glossary already installed in your course. Okay, so yeah, I have my glossary um, and I'll share the link where you can download this glossary. Okay, so if I click on glossary, you'll see there are about 14 pages of um, concepts and the meaning of the concepts. Okay, and I'll share this with you also in the description. Okay, so I have my glossary here. I go back to my course. So let's set up one of my games within my course and I'll add it to my background section here. I'll click on add an activity or resource. Then I'll select one of my games I want to implement on my course. So I'll click on crossword. I'll add, let's say crossword on computing. Scroll down and now it asks me the source of the questions. So I need to select the source of the questions. Now this can either be a glossary or a quiz. Okay, so you'll see there, there's glossary and there's questions and there's quiz. Okay, so let's choose questions. And now I can select from my question bank. It allows me to select, select questions from a category. And I've already set up a category um, it should just be short answer questions, okay? So for the crossword, you'll need short answer questions. And I've added seven questions here in my short answer question category. You can scroll down, disable uh, summarize. I'll leave it on its default. The grade will be, the maximum grade will be 100. And I can add a grade to pass. Then the crossword options, and this is important, I can specify the maximum number of columns or rows. I can specify the minimum number of words, and then I can specify the maximum number of words. Then I can opt for if I want to allow spaces in my answers. So usually this is set to no, because you don't want to allow spaces in your answers. And then you can choose the layout. Uh, should it be phrase, uh, phrases on the bottom of uh, of cross or should it be phrases on the right of the cross? Okay. Also, I can add headers or footers below or above the crossword. Common module settings I leave as is and then restrict access I leave as is under activity module uh, or completion tracking, I show activity as complete when conditions are met. The learners should view the activity and they must receive a grade to actually mark it as complete. If I now click on save and return to course, you will see my, my crossword is added to my section background reading. So let's click on my crossword computing. Here you will see my crossword on computing. I can actually have a description here. Uh, to, to tell the learners what they should do. Then it shows me the grading method, which is the highest grade. And then the students can click on attempt game now. When they click on attempt game now, it will open the crossword puzzle. Give them a welcome message. When they scroll down, they'll actually see here across what name is given to the data type, which represents a whole number with no fractional parts. Okay. When they click on the particular uh, either column or row, they will be able to type in the answer. It provides them with the first letter or the second, the last letter or letters in between. And now they need to type the answer and hit OK. And it will complete the crossword. Here you can see this is across and this is down. Okay. So once they've completed this, they can actually end the crossword game. And then it will show them their marks. Okay. And start a new game. And it will shuffle that um, whole crossword. You'll see that the format changes of the crossword. Now they click again on the selected uh, column or row. 
and they can type in their answers and you'll see down six letters so you have to add six letters here to the crossword it's actually the answer to the question and this is how easy it is to set up a crossword so let's go back to our course now the next game we are going to add is we click on add an activity or resource the next one will be either hangman or who wants to be a millionaire so let's click on who wants to be a millionaire again we can change this let's scroll down and you'll see the source can also be questions select a question category you can select from the your question bank uh, the various question categories uh, so let's choose uh, short answer questions again so there's zero answers there's zero questions there uh, let's choose programming language so this doesn't um, it doesn't matter in what type of questions it is okay so you'll see there will be a zero when it doesn't accept that type of questions okay let's leave everything on its default and let's click on the millionaire options and the background this is the background color and the question should be randomized yes we can add a header or footer and then under activity completion we show activity as complete when the student receives it great scroll down and click on save so now it uses that questions to actually uh, allow me to play the game again my heading my grading method and now students can click on attempt game now and it's the same as who wants to be a millionaire game you have your you can call a friend you can ask the audience or um, you can actually have um, you can actually quit the game okay so there's a 50 50 percent chance where you can select 50 50 you can call a friend you can select the audience or help from people okay so there's my question and now I can select one of my answers okay so when I'm sure uh, about the answer okay I select the answer let's say I choose one 50 50 and it shows me it takes away 50% of the correct on all the answers okay and now I need to I have an option to call a friend so now my option is gone so yeah I think that the correct answer is the new version okay so this is my friend telling me that this should be the correct answer okay so now and this is for 100 100 points okay so I'll choose A and here yeah, you can see okay so I'm correct so I'm on 200 points now okay so the next question will be a program that understands the instructions that you write is called so I still have the audience there left uh, so let's choose let's choose D okay so I'm still on 200 the answer was interpreter your answer is wrong the right answer is interpreter okay and now I'm done so I'm on 200 okay so this is how easy it is to set up your who wants to be a millionaire and this is really fun because it allows them to actually make use of various assistance um, within the game okay and they can move up the uh, by points okay so let's close this let's go back to our course let's add another game and this time we'll add hangman okay so let's leave the name as is and this is also the source can be either the glossary the questions or the quiz so let's click on questions and I'll choose from my question bank uh, there are short answer questions I'll choose from only uh, this hangman also uh, prerequisite is short answer questions. I'll scroll down 
I'll click on the hangman settings, the number of words per game. I can choose the number of words per game. Show the first letter of the hangman. Uh, I'll choose yes. I want to show the first letter, show the last letter, yes. Allow spaces in words, no. Allow the symbol in words, no. Maximum number of errors is six. The select the image of hangman is two. Show the questions is yes and show the correct answer after the game, yes. Okay. And then the language of the words is English. Okay, I can choose a head or footer and under activity completion, show activity is complete and the students must receive a mark. Click on save and return to course. And now I click on my game and I can attempt the game. There's a common error. Not all characters are in the language of the game. Okay, that's okay. So let's attempt the game. So there's my first word. You have six tries. It says here computer is a device which can data. Type the missing word in full below. Which can what data? Okay, so now the learners have to select a word. Five tries left. Nope. You. Four tries left, okay. Let's say that's P. Okay. Now I can click on new game and it will provide me with a new game. Okay, so a computer is a device which can data. Okay, so let's choose R. Okay, let's make this incorrect. And there we go. H and M. Yep. One more, four tries, three or three tries left. That one there, two tries left. That one there. Process, congratulations. Okay. So now, and this is how easy it is to set up the hanging game. So now we've looked at our quiz venture, and then we've looked at various games we've installed in Moodle. Okay. So for our next activity, I'll show you how to include the stash in your Moodle quizzes. For our next gamification feature, we'll include the stash uh, plugin within our quiz. Okay, so let's go to the Moodle's plugin directory. Scroll down to the bottom and click on plugins. And then within the search bar, type in stash and click search. You'll see that it's the first one here. Let's click on it and it works on a coin system. You can watch the video demonstration or you can follow along. Okay, so let's click on versions. And then I'm on 3.11, so this one I will download. Okay, let's go back to our Moodle site. Click on site administration and then click on plugins. Click on install plugins and then drag the install the downloaded plugin to the upload window. Click on install from zipped file and then go through the setup screen. Once your server meets the minimum requirements, click on continue and then upgrade your Moodle database. Here you'll see it's successfully installed. Let's click on continue. Okay, so now it's successfully installed. Now, if we go back to our, the stash plugin, you'll see that it works in conjunction with the filter codes. Okay, so it's the availability plugin, stash availability. We have the plugin here called the block stash, as well as the Availability plugin as well as the shortcode filters. So let's click on availability plugin and we'll download that as well. Let's go to our model site, click on site administration, plugins, install plugins, and then drag the availability plugin to the upload window, install it, go through the setup screens. 
make sure that your environment meets the minimum requirements and upgrade your database. Click on continue. And now for the last one, it's the shortcode plugin. Okay, let's just go back here. Okay, so now it's the shortcode plugin. I'll add the, the links to the description below and you can download it. Okay, so this one, click on version. I'll click on my model installation, site administration, plugins, install plugins. And I'll drag that downloaded plugin into my upload box and I click on install, go through the setup, make sure that my server meets the minimum requirements, click on continue, click on upgrade. And click on continue. Okay, so now we're done installing the plugin. So let's go to our course to set up the feature within our course. And we'll set it up in computing course development. Okay, so now that it's installed, let's add it to our course by first going to add a block if this is not available make sure that turn editing is on by clicking on turn editing on scroll down and click on add a block and in your add a block pane let's look for the stash module or the stash block that we've just added okay once it's added here let's click on setup and then you'll see there's nothing in the list currently. Okay. We can click on add an item. And now we can give it an item a name. And then the amount limit as well as the image as well as some details. Okay. So I'll add an item name. So let's say this is my, um, let's call this batch one. Okay. Uh, scarce item this is basically it will only come up once in a in a quiz or two times in a quiz okay determining on the amount which is available okay if we enable this we can set the limit amount okay so if you have a scarce item let's say you have a group of items and you have one item that is scarce you can select this and type in the amount that should be available for the students to um, accumulate and then they they will stand out as having the first one to uh, to have this badge okay for now let's leave this unchecked and now for the images let's go to uh, type in free images and we'll go to pixels either pixels or pixabay um, which will, here you can obtain free images. Okay, so we'll type in badge. And here are different badges that you can use. You can also type in characters like, um, let's say Pokemon. They'll have different images that you can use and maybe you can, uh, let's say they attempt a um, difficult question. You can provide them with a, a nice Pikachu or something else, a nice Pokemon, okay? So then they have a group of Pokemons they can accumulate, okay? So you can download some of the images here, which you want to use. Um, I've already downloaded some of the images, so I'll add an image here. Go to my downloads folder and in my downloads folder there's badges and yeah I have a twitch I have a mug a twitch mug so I'll add that one there I'll upload it so there's my image I can click on I can add some details here or some details pertaining to this image or pertaining to this badge okay 
Now I can click on Save and Next. So here you can see uh, my item is badge 1, my location, where should it be? I can specify a location uh, and here you can read the name of the location is only useful for you to organize your items uh, and do not be displayed to students. Okay, um, so you can specify it here. Then the supplies, is this an unlimited item or are there only one badge 1? Okay. So you can state here that there's one or there's unlimited. So I'll make that only one badge. Then the collection interval. Should it be every hour, every week, every day, uh, once a minute or once a second? Okay. Depending on where they uh, can obtain or accumulate this. Okay. So I'll leave it every hour. Then I click on save and next. And here yeah, you'll need to supply where uh, the location is okay so I'll call this my computing course okay then I click on save and next and here you can see there's my item okay and it will show pickup uh, once um, the learners can access or answer the question correctly so so here you'll see once you have created the item and the location, you need to add a code snippet to your course. Okay, so you'll see here appearance, the image and the button or just the image. It will show just the image. The text, it will just show the text or the image and the button. It will display the whole image and the button. So I'll leave it as is. I can change this, pick up but I'll leave it as is for now. And this is my short code. Okay, so I'll copy this. I'll copy the short code. And now I can go back to my main screen. Okay, so now my first one is created. So what I need to do now is I can go back into my course. Remember, I've copied the short code. And this is where the the plugin, the short code plugin comes in. Okay, so the filter codes plugin, uh, and I'll show you now. Okay, so let's go and create a quiz. So let's add an activity or resource, and I'll select my quiz activity, and I'll call this my stash, my stash quiz. Okay. Uh, my timing I can leave as is, my grade um, I can limit only one attempt. Remember, I'm only allowing one attempt because I, do, I don't want them to accumulate a lot of my coins or my stash. The layout should be every question. Doesn't matter for my question behavior. My reviewing option I leave on default. My appearance, no image. Um, I'll leave this on zero decimals. I don't use safe exam browser. Extra restriction on attempts. No. Nope. And then activity completion is show activity is complete. Students must view it and students must receive it. Great. Okay. Tags and competencies I don't use. I click on save and return to course. Okay. So there's my quiz. So let's set up the quiz. I go to edit quiz. And I'll go to add and add from the question bank. And now I'll select, I'll select my seven questions that I've set up, my short answer questions. Okay. I'll add everything here to my quiz by selecting this. And there's my seven questions. Okay. So now I need to go into my questions. So in my first question, so here's my question. Let's just go down. Okay. So now, remember, we've copied the short code. So I'll paste it in here. So there's my short code that I've copied uh, on my stash uh, plugin. Let's click on save. If the learner should view or attempt the quiz, you'll see there it shows my badge and they can click on pick up and it will, they will eventually pick up that uh, icon or that uh, particular stash item okay 
So let's go to our course again. And here you'll see under report, when you click on report, you'll see there's nothing to display. The items there is only my badge here. Okay, so I'll, I'll enroll the student now in this course and he can attempt the course. But let's add some more items here. So let's click on add an item. And I'll call this my badge 2. Okay. Add an image. Choose. Let's go back. This time I'll choose this diamond here. Open. Upload. Okay, so there it is. I click on Save. Next. There's it's within my course uh, computing so i'll just copy that there copy it and paste it here okay uh, supplies is only one and the interval is one hour i'll click on save next then there's my button and my image okay and there's my short code control and c i'll go back to my main course so let's go to my course. You'll see now there's two items. I'll go to my quiz. And I'll click on the gear icon. And I'll click on edit quiz. Go to my second question. And then just underneath my question. Let's make a, another space there. I'll paste my short code. I'll click on save. Changes. And let's preview that question. So there's my question, and there's my badge item, and they can pick it up here, okay? For my third one, let's add another one, okay? Let's go to Setup, add an item, I'll call this badge 3, remember you can name this any, you can give this any name you want. Okay, let's add an image. Okay, so my third one will be... Okay, so this is a bow. Let's choose that one. Upload. Okay, click on save and next. Um, it's also in my course computing. I'll copy that and I'll paste it in here. I'll leave everything on its default. I'll save and next. There's my image. I'll copy this short code. Control C, I'll go back. Okay, so now I have three items. Let's go back to my course and I'll go to my quiz and then go to edit quiz. And now I'll add this on my last question. Okay, I'll add it here. Control V. Click Save. Okay, let's view that. Okay, so there's my item. Okay, so now let's create a student and enroll the student in the course and allow the student to attempt this quiz. And you can also tell the student that uh, they can accumulate um, stash items. And then we'll look at the report that uh, the stash block provides. Okay, so I've enrolled Andy here in my course. And now I'll, I will allow Andy to actually attempt that quiz. So let's bring in Andy here. And I'll log in as Andy. Let's take Andy to my courses, and there's my course. Okay, let's just end this too. Okay, so let's go to my quiz. There's my quiz. Okay, and attempt the quiz now. And you'll see immediately the stash item appears. Uh, and let's add this answer here. So I'll choose receive here. I can pick it up. And next, 
So there's my second one there, batch two. Okay, let's just wait till it loads. Okay, there it loads. I can pick the second one up there. Uh, my second one, let's say this is store. Next. Um, and let's just go through the quiz. I just want to go to my last question there. Let's take that. Okay, and there's my last question. I'll pick the bow up. And this should be, let's call this float. Okay, finish attempt. Submit all and finish. Yes, I want to finish it. Okay, and now you'll see there's my results. Okay, I have three correct, uh, one partially correct. Okay, and I'll finish this. So now when Andy goes back to his course, there you'll see in his stash box, he has accumulated three of the badges, three items. Okay, and you can click on it and it will show him the badge item. Okay, second one as well as the third one. Okay, so now from an admin point of view, let's remove this. Okay, so from an admin point of view, let's refresh this. If I click on reports now, you'll see there's Andy and he obtained three stash items. Okay, um, and I can click on the stash items and it will show me. Um, I can click on actions. You'll see here there's one point for this one, one point and one point for Andy. And I can increase or decrease the marks that um, he has obtained for the items. I can also add some items and I can also delete some of the items. Now Andy can also trade uh, some of the items, okay? So let's say this item is only one point and this one is four points and this one is five points. You can actually set up trading. So you can add a trade widget by clicking on add and then you can specify which items you want for trade, okay? So um, you can specify when they can gain points and also when they lose points. So let's say uh, you're in a quiz and you obtain an incorrect answer, but you have a badge, you can allow that badge to actually um, to gain loss. So I can click on add. So badge one can actually be, um, if, if you receive badge one, you are, you, your point will be subtracted. Okay. You can add an item here. So that if you if you obtain this badge one, um, you will be losing points. But if you obtain, let's say badge three, this will add five points to your scoring. Okay. So if you uh, obtain the bow and bow, you will accumulate five points. But if you obtain a um, jug or mug, you will lose one mark okay and this is how you can trade okay so let's click on save and now you'll see the trade we can specify a trade name uh, each time we create a widget the trade widget if i go to report now you'll see it's still there okay so and this is how easy it is to set up the stash plugin or module as well as the stash block Okay, and you can add these items anywhere in your course. You can actually go in and add it to a file. So I can add it here underneath. So once they click on that file or access that file, they will be able to accumulate that uh, specific badge. Okay, so let's paste. Oops, no, it's not that one. Let's paste that short code of that. You can paste the short code in here of any badge here and you can save it. And once they click on the file, they will actually obtain that badge. And you as a teacher or an administrator can go into the report and you can see exactly who obtained uh, the, the various items. And you can, as, as I've said, you can add it to any activity within your course. It doesn't matter as long as you copy and paste that short code. This video shows you how to add the quiz venture activity as well as the games and the stash activity to your course. 
and to gamify your Moodle quizzes. I hope this video was helpful. Please support my channel, like and subscribe and hit the bell icon for further videos on my channel.